In this video, we're going to look at three types of solutions, unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated. These categories have to do with the amount of solute that's dissolved in a solution. We're going to explore these types of solutions by looking at how a substance dissolves in water. So here's a substance we're going to dissolve. To make things easier, we're just going to use a made up generic salt. First off, we look up the solubility of our salt. Solubility is how much solute dissolves in a given amount of solvent. You can find this information on a solubility chart. We'll put a simple one right here. Now, we find that at 20 degrees Celsius, the solubility of our salt is 15 grams per 100 grams of water. Notice that solubility is given for specific conditions for 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Solubility values always include the amount of solvent and the temperature. Most charts use 100 grams of water, but it's good to check just to be sure. And temperature is important because temperature affects solubility. For most solid solutes, the higher the temperature, the more can be dissolved. So again, we need to be specific. So here, 20 degrees Celsius. Let's add some salt to 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. We'll keep our solubility data right here in the corner to remind us. Now, if you could zoom in on the salt here, you'd see it's made of tiny crystals. We're just mentioning this now, but it's going to be important later. So let's say we had five grams of salt. Now, the solubility of our salt is 15 grams of salt per 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So our five grams, it dissolves pretty easily. And that's because a solution is unsaturated. An unsaturated solution hasn't reached the maximum amount of solute. It can still hold more solute at that temperature. So it has five grams of salt dissolved. The maximum is 15 grams. So the solution here is unsaturated. So let's add five more grams of salt. Now, there's already five grams of salt dissolved in the water, so this extra five grams is going to give us a total of 10 grams of salt here in the beaker. Our solution is still unsaturated because it has less than 15 grams, which is the limit. And those five grams dissolve, and now we have 10 grams of salt dissolved. Let's add another five grams of salt. Since it's already 10 grams dissolved, we now have 15 grams of salt in the beaker. Now, it may take a little longer to dissolve, and we might have to stir a little bit harder, but eventually it's all going to dissolve, and we'll have 15 grams of salt in the solution. At this point, the solution is saturated. It holds the maximum amount of solute for that temperature. The solution holds 15 grams of salt and 15 grams is the maximum. So as you can see, saturation is closely related to solubility. Now because our solution is saturated, we can't dissolve any more salt. Let's slide this beaker over to the left for the next part. Just remember it's saturated with 15 grams of salt. Let's add another five grams anyway, just to see what happens. Remember, there's already 15 grams of salt dissolved in the water. So now we have 20 grams of salt in the beaker. No matter how hard you stir, the extra salt is just going to swirl around in the beaker. It's just not going to dissolve. And once you're done stirring, the extra salt settles to the bottom, just like this. In our solution, there are 
15 grams dissolved and five grams undissolved settled on the bottom. Remember, that's because a solution can't hold any more than 15 grams of salt. But let's slide this beaker over to the left again, and we'll bring back our solubility chart. Is there any way to get this extra salt to dissolve? Well, one way would be to raise the temperature. Remember, solubility is linked to temperature. And we can see from our solubility chart here that solubility increases with temperature. Let's say we raise the temperature of our solution to 100 degrees Celsius. We look at the solubility chart and see that at 100 degrees Celsius, the solubility of our salt becomes 25 grams per 100 grams of water. It was 15 at 20 degrees, but now it's 25 grams at 100 degrees. So if we heat the solution up to 100 degrees Celsius, that extra 5 grams dissolves because the solution is unsaturated at this higher temperature. We have 20 grams of salt dissolved in the water at 100 degrees Celsius, but it could hold 25. Okay, let's slide this over again. Remember, it's got 20 grams of salt dissolved. Now, we're gonna add five more grams of salt. That's 20 grams already dissolved, so we have 25 total grams in the beaker because our solubility is 25 grams of salt at 100 degrees Celsius, we have again created a saturated solution. 25 grams, 25 grams, 100 degrees. Okay, so now we're gonna do something different. For our next step, we're gonna change the temperature again. We'll cool it back down to 20 degrees Celsius. What do you think is going to happen? Remember, at 100 degrees, the solution can hold 25 grams of salt. But at 20 degrees, it can only hold 15 grams. So there's like an extra 10 grams in there, right? Well, that extra 10 grams of salt comes out of solution and forms solid crystals. You can actually see the crystals forming as the solution cools. We call this recrystallization because the salt started as crystals, dissolved, and then came back out of solution as crystals that are now undissolved. So once our solution stabilizes at 20 degrees, we'll find 10 extra grams of salt crystals have settled to the bottom. They're undissolved. Just like before, at 20 degrees, only 15 grams can dissolve. So that's how we go from a saturated solution and get crystals to form. Now, it turns out there's actually a way to kind of trick a solution into holding more solute than it should. This creates a supersaturated solution. Let's go back to when we saturated our solution at 100 degrees Celsius. There are 25 grams of salt in this solution. But instead of cooling it quickly, we're going to take our time. We're going to let it cool to 20 degrees very slowly. And we have to be careful not to bump or disturb the solution as it cools. If we do everything right, the extra solute will remain in the solution. It doesn't come out as crystals. Even though the saturation point is 15 grams of salt at 20 degrees Celsius, it's holding 25 grams in solution. It's super saturated. A supersaturated solution holds more solute 
than is theoretically possible at a given temperature. It's kind of, it's kind of overloaded. The thing about supersaturated solutions is they're very unstable. All that extra solute, it just wants to come out of the solution. Here's a, here's a pretty good analogy that I really like. Did you ever play one of those games where you pull blocks out of a wooden tower? Sometimes you, you look at a tower that's teetering and you just think, how the heck is that thing still standing? Even the slightest bump is going to bring it just crashing down. And that's a lot like a super saturated solution. It's super unstable. All that extra solute just wants to crash out of solution and it only takes the smallest push. The best way to make this happen is to add just a little bit more solute. Sometimes even just one crystal is enough. We call this a seed crystal. So let's add a seed crystal of salt to our supersaturated solution. What do you think happens? Boom! That extra 10 grams of solute starts to recrystallize. Now, for some solutes, this happens super fast, and the crystals just appear and grow literally right in front of your eyes. It's incredibly cool. These crystals contain all the extra solute that was dissolved in the supersaturated solution above the capacity of what the saturated solution could hold. It's like that seed crystal kind of encourages the extra solute to come out of the solution. And when the recrystallization process is over, our solution is back to the way it should be at 20 degrees Celsius, saturated with 15 grams still in solution and 10 grams of crystals undissolved at the bottom. Now that we've talked through the background, let's look at a real life example of this. If you've ever seen rock candy, it's basically a bunch of sugar crystals on a stick. And to make rock candy, you cool a super saturated solution to make crystals. Here's how that would happen. First, you need to boil some water and then saturate the water with sugar so it won't hold anymore. And as you can see from this chart, sugar has a pretty high solubility at 100 degrees Celsius. Sometimes people add food coloring or flavoring too when they're making rock candy. After you've saturated the solution at 100 degrees Celsius, you gently lower the temperature. If everything goes right, at room temperature, you'll have a super saturated solution. It's holding more sugar than it can maintain. So then you take a stick or a string and you coat it with some sugar crystals and lower it into the solution. The sugar on the stick gives the seed crystals that will start the recrystallization process. And all the extra sugar in the supersaturated solution will recrystallize on the string or on the stick. Bam! And here are the crystals. Now, sugar recrystallizes pretty slowly, so you've got to wait a couple days. But then, you've made rock candy. If you want to try this yourself, you can find some more detailed recipes online, and if you do it, you'll know the chemistry of what's going on. So, let's review what we've learned about solutions and saturation. As long as a solution can hold more solute, it's unsaturated. A saturated solution holds the maximum amount of solute at that temperature. No more solute can dissolve. If you raise the temperature, you can usually get the solute to dissolve and you'll make a new saturated solution with more solute. Then, if you carefully lower the temperature, you can make a super saturated solution, which holds more solute than theoretically possible at that temperature. 
but supersaturated solutions are unstable. If you add a little bit more solute, the extra solute recrystallizes and you have a saturated solution again. So that's saturation.